Hi, I'm Nigel, and this is Nigel Goes to Space. When I go up into space, I'll be travelling from Britain to New Mexico, and that's going to take about the best part of a day to get to where the space planes take off from. And our planet seems a pretty big world. It's over 12,000 kilometres across, but compared to some of the other planets, it's actually a pretty measly kind of a little place. Um, well, I've got some fruit here. Let me show you. Imagine this blueberry as our planet Earth. Now, if I take the biggest planet, this grapefruit here is Jupiter. But let's start closer to home, looking at our neighbour worlds in space. So this is our Earth, and the planet that's closest to the Sun is little Mercury. When I say little, I mean it is as tiny as that, as tiny as the peppercorn on the scale of the planets compared to our blueberry Earth. Next up, we have Venus. That's almost the twin of the Earth, so I need another blueberry roughly about the same size. That's Venus, our Earth. And the next one out is Mars. Red planet Mars, about half the size of the Earth. And what these four planets have got in common? They're all made out of rock. So the astronomers call them terrestrial planets. That means Earth-like. Our four little planets here. Oops, where did Mercury go? <laughs> there we are. And that is our immediate planetary neighbours in space. When we get out beyond Mars, we get to the giant planets, and we call them giant planets because they are real whoppers. Take a look at Jupiter, for instance. Our grapefruit is compared to the, the blueberry, which is the Earth. And there's another difference. Earth is made up of rock. Jupiter is mainly made of gas, hydrogen gas, the lightest of all the gases. It may have a rocky core right in the centre, but the gas is squeezed down. And this gaseous world is rotating really quickly. The Earth turns around in 24 hours. It gives us our day. Jupiter, although it's so much bigger, goes around in less than 10 hours. So day and night comes really quickly there. And its giant gravity squeezes the gas. So it becomes, it's actually denser than water, even though it's made out of gas. So it would sink. Well, let me show you. Let's take these uh, sorry flowers, move those out of the vase for the moment. If we could put Jupiter into a vase of water and let go, it sinks, even though it's made of gas. Beyond Jupiter, we have Saturn. Now we think of Saturn with its beautiful rings going around it. And I'll come back to Saturn's rings another time, but today let's look at the planet itself without its rings. Uh, it's the second biggest planet, so it's an orange in my fruit bowl compared to the blueberry for the Earth. And like Jupiter, Saturn is made of gas throughout, mainly hydrogen, but it's less squeezed by the planet's gravity. And that means that if you took Saturn and you put it into an ocean, Saturn's light enough to actually float. The final two planets are another pair of twins, Uranus and Neptune. And in my fruit bowl, they would be a couple of small satsumas. Now, although they're smaller than Jupiter and Saturn, they're still pretty monstrous compared to the Earth. So here's one of our outer planets compared to our little blueberry Earth. And they're made up of water throughout. So Neptune is actually quite a good name because Neptune was the god of the oceans. Uranus is pretty odd because while most planets spin around that way as they go around the sun, Uranus is actually spinning on its side like that as it goes around the sun. So it has very strange seasons. Those are the eight planets of our solar system from Mercury all the way up to Neptune. But hang on a second, you're saying, where's Pluto? What's happened to Pluto? Well, astronomers have demoted it. They no longer call it a planet. It's a dwarf planet, but not one of the eight main planets. Uh, and the reason why is basically it's so small. Let me show you. Let me just oh, let me put these poor flowers back in their vase. Clear a bit of space. And uh, Mercury is a little peppercorn like that. Pluto is even smaller than that. It's smaller than any of the other eight planets. And not only that, it's not alone. If Pluto is a planet, then we have to find all these newly discovered worlds out there, planets. And astronomers have now discovered thousands of little worlds out where Pluto is. And there are probably hundreds of thousands, maybe a million. And if Pluto is a planet, then those millions of little worlds have got to be called planets as well. All the planets are moving around the most massive object in our solar system, which contains almost all the mass of the solar system, and its gravity makes everything move, and that is the sun. I don't have anything big enough in my fruit bowl for the sun. It's massive. So let's find something which is a bit bigger. This exercise ball should do the job. Now, 
Oh, I better get my bit of exercise myself pumping as well. <laughs> Let's find out how we're going to inflate our sun. I think it could be that end. Now pump it up and see how big it gets. This could take some time, especially when my pump's just disintegrated. Now let's try that again. Oh. I never was a solar physicist. <laughs> I need a better pump for this one. Well, there we go. Let's try one more go at this one. Maybe this time if I hold the tube in place. Oh, this is this is as far as I've got. It's not totally inflated, but you can begin to see just how big the sun is. But let me show you. This is our little blueberry earth compared to the sun. And even giant planet Jupiter is nothing compared to this massive monster I've got in my hand. Um, it would take a thousand Earths to fit inside one Jupiter. It would take a thousand Jupiters to fit inside the Sun. So you need a million of our planet to fill up our Sun. If our Sun were hollow, how we could do that. And this massive beast is what controls the eight planets and the debris and everything else in our solar system. And the Sun is not a planet itself, it's a star. And stars are something I'll talk about another day. Thanks for joining me today for my fruit salad of planets. And if you've got any questions about the worlds of our solar system, anything else to do with the cosmos, or about my trip into space, please contact me. I'll answer your questions and subscribe to Naked Science. And I'll see you next time on Nigel Goes to Space.